What's going on guys? This is gonna be the part five to the homebrew build. Um, this is a very long overdue update, so I do apologize for that, but I have a lot of exciting updates to report. Um, so I guess the big question from parts three to now is we have ditched the keg kettles. Um, there's a good reason for that, which I'm gonna get into. Um, the main reason, unfortunately, is that I continued to have rusting issues with these. So after I tried MIG welding them myself, I knew that rust might be a problem um, and we don't want to be brewing with that sort of contaminant, obviously. So what we did was I cut out all of the fittings and then I took them to a professional welding shop. Um, I spoke to them, explained what we were doing, and got their assurances that they could take weld this to sanitary quality and all would be good. Um, all the welds looked really good on the outside and then we got it back here started running the system and I started to notice corrosion issues on the inside like I was having before so at this point um, my advice would be if you were gonna go this route and if I could go back again and do it all over skip welding it seems like a great idea but it's really not worth it um, what I did with these new kettles, um, the Mega Pots is what I got. I'll have links to this on, M I got them off of Amazon. Um, they're 15 gallon kettles, which is also really nice is they have little tick marks that tell you how many gallons are in there. Um, just small little things like that are making me realize why this was like an awesome idea, but just wouldn't have worked out that well. It might be good to start with if you wanted to um, save a little money, but with the amount of time and energy I put into polishing these, cutting them, I honestly didn't save any money, especially adding in the welding costs. Um, but go with compression fittings, which is what we have here. So these are reverse thread compression fittings um, that are one half inch MPT inner thread. And I will have a link to these in the description as well. These worked, these worked great. Um, what we did was with these new kettles when I got them, we cut the holes with hole saws, um, just marked everything up. And I also was sort of able to redesign my initial design as I learned a few things, um, like putting a water inlet fill on the back, um, putting the openings for the tri-clamp fittings for the heating elements on the back because I didn't need them on the front and sticking out making more of a mess. Everything on the front here is plumbed exactly the same as it was um, in the original videos uh, for the kettles. So I didn't change anything from that aspect. I did move some things around. Um, we now have all the temperature sensors working. All the XLR cables are hooked up. Um, so we have 10 different temperature feeds coming in. Each tank has somewhat of a similar setup. We have feeds, temperature feeds from the inlets and outlets as well as a generic one for the tank. Um, what I've started to realize, if I could go to a, a V3, thinking that far ahead, is that what we've been doing is we've been brewing five gallon batches because that seems to be a good size and we find some recipes. We've found a lot of recipes that are five gallon batches also like it's costing roughly uh, about $30 up to $40 a batch depending on what you brew. That's a very rough estimate so don't hold me to that. But what we've brewed so far we've made four batches um, and we've done three batches that are about $30 to $40 and then the most recent one we did involved a lot more hops so it was about $90. But it really depends what you're going to be brewing and such. But where I was going with that is if I could go back again now, I would move these tank temperature sensors lower because what we find a lot of the time is that the water level of the mash or the wort or the boil is not high enough to actually hit what was intended to be my tank temperature sensor. Now that's not the worst thing in the world because the way we designed it, we get the readings from going in and out. Um, but overall, here's kind of the system we're working with now. So as I mentioned, we're using the Mega Pots. I got these off of Amazon. And then we're using a new uh, mass drain setup. To be honest, we're not too crazy about this setup. Um, I've been, we're now four brews in with it. It's a nice, it looks like it's a nice setup, but it's not that sturdy. So when you put a lot of grain on top of it, it tends to bend down and in, um, and it gets a little dented. Now you can undent it, but that's not the greatest thing in the world, as well as the line is, I wanna say three eighths, whereas before and all of the cam lock fitting line we're working with is half inch. So we struggle to actually suck the wart through the grain. Um, so we have some feed issues with the pump. So I'm looking to redesign that a little bit. Um, but besides that, we've got the pots. We also now have true lids, which is actually really nice and useful. Um, when we were working with these, my sort of makeshift lids that were the old keg tops 
uh, they released a lot of steam and we would struggle to get up to a true boil, um, if not almost maybe never get there just because the amount of liquid in the tanks um, and how much we'd be boiling off, so our boil off rate would be crazy. Um, so now sort of mentioning an overview of the tanks, where we're at with them, uh, we're gonna go to, I guess, the technology aspect that's fully operational now. So we have the brew controller, Uniflex controller. Our initial goal was to sort of replicate this controller without actually buying it from brew control. Uh, it turned out to just be way more time efficient and cost effective use of our time to just purchase the controller outright. Um, it's about $890 um, base model and then we sort of added every option because we're working with dual heating elements, dual pumps, um, and we wanted to just not need to upgrade down the line. But this has been the greatest thing we could have done so far. Now this yellow 3D printed box over here that you're seeing, um, these are like dual throw relays. I'm not exactly the technical expert on this. I did do all of the wiring, but uh, one of my roommates is the one who's the computer engineer and gave me a wiring diagram. Essentially what we have here is we have um, reverse polarity ball valves um, and they're all electronically controlled. So we needed to create a system so that we could electronically control the ball valves because the way this is set up, it wouldn't work. So I did all the wiring for this. I think it came out pretty nicely. And then we made it all work off of XLR connectors. That way we can just unplug everything on the front and the back and it makes everything really easy for cleaning. Um, if we were to redesign that, I think we have a few more ideas on how we could do it a little bit cleaner and neater. But for the time being, no complaints. We really like how this is working. We unplug everything to clean it all outside. Um, we can spray it out with a hose, take it, dump it. Works really well. So this brew control setup here, you see it actually hooks up to the computer interface over here that we have designed. Um, there are some templates available from brew control and we sort of took a template and mashed it together with our own idea of what we wanted to see. So if you're looking at this, you can we haven't we haven't renamed everything yet, but it's vessel one, two, and three or your your boil your um, HLT, your mash, and your boil um, if you're getting a little technical. So as you can see here, we have um, every sort of ball valve is up here. So we have eight different ball valves and then we have all of our temperature readings coming out. Um, and then we have the ability to control our element. And with this system, you can only run one element at a time, um, which I guess could be a little bit of a downside if you were trying to get ambitious and be and uh, essentially be heating up a new batch of strike water while you were boiling your first batch if you were gonna try and run two batches at the same time. but that's just a small little note is you can only have one heating element on at a time with this system. But besides that, we absolutely love the system. The end goal uh, when we started this project was to create a autonomous brewing script, essentially for a batch. Um, what we've realized since we've started doing that is that there'd be no way to make it fully autonomous in the current setup. I would need some sort of plumbing manifold because there is the manual aspect of switching the lines. Um, the script would be able to run everything except for, for switching the lines, but that's something we plan to try and tackle in the future here. To open and close the ball valves is really simple. Um, you just click on these, as is the way we've got it set up, and you'll hear the ball valves move. Some lights will switch off to sort of give you another indicator, and everything will open and close as needed, which is really nice. We have timers on here, which we don't use as much as we should, to be honest. We're starting to sort of integrate them. The really cool thing about this system, which is why we think we've had some good success so far with our first few batches, is the amount of control and data we're sort of gathering. Um, with every temperature output from all the different locations, for example, when we're mashing in, if we have a mashing value of like 149 degrees per se, we've got a temperature reading coming out of our mash in. We've got a temperature reading going into our coil. We've got a temperature reading coming out of our coil. And then we've got another temperature reader reading going back into our mash. So that gives us a lot of good values and data to work with because we can see our heat loss. We're able to see how much heat we're losing from the time we come out to when we go into the coil. We can see how much heat we're gaining through the coil. So we're able to really dial in and fine tune sort of what temperature we need this tank at in order to achieve our desired mash and temperature here. Same goes for the boil. With the boil, I mean, if you're running at a true boil value, it's not the biggest thing in the world, but specifically in the mashing end stage, having all that data available to us has proven extremely helpful. 
Um, I'm trying to think of anything else that's really unique. Something that we paid for uh, was an option with the brew control is um, pulse with modulation control. So with our heating elements, they're not just fully on or fully off. Um, we're able to run them at a certain percentage. So once you have your target value sort of achieved, we can go in here in the PID control setting and we can select our input, for example. So if I wanted to have the input to trigger the PID, um, be whatever temperature sensor I want, we can set a target temperature and then it will automatically maintain that temperature for us as it sees fit providing power on and off. But like I mentioned, it's not just fully on 100% or fully off. It'll run at 40, 50, 60% to sort of maintain um, that target value, which is really nice. So overall, that's sort of the big update to the system. Um, I know that probably doesn't do it justice, but if you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment below. I do my best to respond to everyone. Um, we're gonna be definitely putting out some more videos now. As I mentioned, uh, we're four brews in, so I might at the end of this video just throw some pictures and a little voiceover of what we've done so far. Um, but hopefully we're gonna actually film a brew day coming shortly. Um, and uh, I definitely also want to do a much more in-depth video on the system because I am by no means the genius that created it, um, but we're using it and I think there's still a lot of features that we haven't even begun to scratch the surface for what you can use this for. I know you can use it for fermentation, you can use it for temperature control. There's a whole host of features that we're not using it for yet, but I think we're gonna unlock its full potential um, with the more brews we do. So I'm really excited where we are now. Um, thank you for staying tuned in to the people that have asked for where is version, where is video five. Um, hopefully this gives you a good update as to our progress and as I said, a uh, brew day video will be coming and some more updates so please stay tuned and thanks for st sticking with me while it's taking me so long to get all these videos out see you in the next one